So we recently made this beautiful farmhouse table for a client and we did traditional breadboard ends on this and I wanna show you how I do them in my shop. So right now we're setting up our cut to do the tenons on the end of the table. We're gonna do one on this side, one on the other side and this is gonna give us the tenon on this and then we're gonna have our mortise cut into that piece over there. Um, for this, we wanted to do two inch tenons, so we just measured in two inches, we used a one, two, three block for it here. We put our two inch piece, or two inch side here, struck a line, and then earlier we used this rule, you can use any rule to find the distance from the edge of the router to the inside edge of the bit. And then we added two inches to that. But what I did is I took this line and I put this right up against there, and we put our fence here, and then I took another rule and I set the stop to this depth. So now we're set up here on this and we'll do the same thing here. And then we're gonna clamp it down. Thanks, Sean. And then we're gonna start cutting. And you can see here that come in tight. You can see that if we lower this, the other, excuse me, the other side of our bit is actually right up against that line. And we're kind of good to go here. So we're going to be cutting along there. But when you're cutting these, you're going to want to start on the outside and then move your way in because eventually you're going to run out of anything to reference on for your base plate. So if you have a router with a depth guide on it, it's really helpful to find out how deep you're gonna go into the piece of wood. So for this, we're wanting to go 3 eighths of an inch deep. So I'm gonna set my router to the top of the piece and then I'm gonna lock it in place. And then I'm gonna take my thing here, raise it up to match this 3 eighths setup guide, or setup block, excuse me. And we're gonna tighten that in and that will get us to a 3 eighths plunge when we drop it. So next we're gonna lay out our tenons. We're gonna have a stub tenon and we're gonna have three full length tenons here. So we're gonna find center of our piece. In this particular case, it's 19 and 9 16 It'll be different for your table for sure, <laughs> whatever you're making. So we're gonna do that. That's our center mark. And then we're gonna come in three quarters of an inch from the sides. I'm a lefty, so everything becomes really difficult. And then we're gonna come in four inches from that as well. So let me get my other rule here. So we're gonna make our middle tenon six inches wide. So I'm gonna come over three inches from that center mark. Just throw a mark down. Do the same thing on the other side. And then the next thing we need to do is lay out our stub tenon, which will be the full length of this whole piece here. So that's gonna be a half inch stub. So set our rule here to half inch. We're gonna slide down this. That's not right, what am I doing? <laughs> We're gonna come in a half an inch, excuse me. Then we're gonna mark out our waist. So we cut on the right sides of the lines here and get everything dialed in. So we're gonna find the distance to our blade here using this rule. You can just use a combination square or you can use a tape measure. Just tape, measure it out and then set your distance that way. But uh, we also did a half inch stub tenon over there. So we're gonna take all of our gear over there and start marking this up. <clears throat> so since we have our distance here, we can take this setup block I just really like setup blocks, they work really nicely. And we can set our fence, and you don't need to use a nice track saw track, you can just use a nice straight cut piece of plywood. This is overkill for sure, but if you're trying to make a straight line, just use anything that's straight in your shop. All 
All right. I did want to mention that you want to make sure that your jigsaw is centered. And if it's not, your jigsaw blade is centered on the actual bed here, I guess. It is not on this saw. I'm actually kind of surprised about that. It is this distance here and whatever this distance is here. So it's not exactly centered. So you need to make sure that you're cutting on the side that, rep, that you just referenced against. So now I'm using a drill. I'm using a large bit so I can get as close to the line here without really going over. If you go over just a little bit, it's not the end of the world. But I want to get as close as I can so I can get my jigsaw blade in there to start cutting down this line. And now we're going to use our fence to follow the cut. So on the sides here, you have a couple options. You can cut all the way through to the shoulder and remove this cheek. Um, that's what we're gonna do. We like to have it look really clean. Basically, we're gonna make a pocket. It's gonna have a stopped mortise in the breadboard and you won't see that there is a tenon here. What you can do though is leave this and do a completely through basically a huge groove or dado on the breadboard end and you'll you'll actually make this exposed. And it's just an aesthetics choice. There's no real structural difference between the two. It's how you want it to look. So what'll end up happening is if these two pieces, if this piece moves more than the breadboard does, then this will likely go out or in more. It'll be more pronounced. You'll see the seasonal movement in in the in the table, which some people like. That's an aesthetic choice again. But we like to hide it, so we're actually going to cut this off, and we're not going to have any shoulder here. We're going to we're going to remove the material all the way back to the shoulder, and this is going to be a hidden tenon. <laughs> Okay, so the next step is to transfer our tenons to our breadboard, and we're just gonna use the tenons to do that. So we wanna give ourselves about a quarter of an inch on either side of the tenons for wood movement, for seasonal wood movement. So we're actually just gonna use a quarter inch, set up block, and strike these lines here. We'll use those lines to set up for the mortises. So we had an inch and a half top, and I wanted to have a three quarter inch tenon, so we're gonna take 3 eighths of an inch off both sides of the piece. Okay, so next we are gonna take the breadboard over to the router table because we are gonna run a long mortise down the length of this between these two markup layout lines that we made here. Um, this is for the stub tenon. So we're only gonna be going in and half an inch, but it will be the full length. And what we did here was we put lines on the outside of the bit on both sides so that we can, that's our stop point there and we'll run it this way. And then we'll take the, the piece off, flip it around, same mark, drop it down, and then run it that way. And that'll get us our mortise for our stub tenon.
So we're over to the mortiser. We are going to use the mortiser to cut our mortises. So what we're gonna do here is bring the chisel to where we're pretty much flush with the top of the surface here. And what we need is our mortise to go down two inches. And we're actually gonna go a little bit deeper than two inches to have a little play in there and enough room for glue. So we're gonna go over to our depth stop here and we're gonna use our one, two, three block to find our two inches of depth, which would be this dimension here. And we're gonna set that there. There, tighten that up. And there's actually a small amount of space here. This is probably a little more than an eighth of an inch, but we actually want that depth in the bottom of our mortise anyway for our glue space. So that's gonna give us that. If you do not have a mortiser in your shop, I, that completely makes sense to me. What you can do is go to the drill press and use a Forstner bit to hog out the majority of the material, but you will have to go back with the chisel and clean out the rest of the mortise, which is fine. The, the, that's a fine process. It works very well, and you get a lot of hand tool time in, which is fun. But that's the benefit of the mortiser is that it's got the chisel and the hogging aspect all in one shot. So you're coming in, it's hogging out the material, and it's giving you a nice square and flat mortise. got done cutting the mortises and keep in mind we made our mortises a little smaller than the tenons so that we could come back with a block plane and sneak up on the fit. My goal is to make it something of like a piston fit when you're trying to get this on. You don't want to have to bash the breadboard on, but you also don't want it to slide on super easy. You want it to be a really nice tight fit. Mm. That's a great fit. So right now I'm going to do the markup for my draw bore. This is going to be two and a quarter inches in from this mark because this actual mortise in here is, um, is four inches wide, but we added a quarter of an inch to each side, so it takes us to four and a half inches. Half of that is two and a quarter. So we're gonna come in two and a quarter. That's our center. This one was already marked center, so we're good there. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. Mark two and a quarter. And there are our center pieces, or our center marks. And we're ready to pull these off and drill through these to set our dowels. So I've determined that I want to put my dowel one and a quarter inches from the shoulder. So that's gonna be, you know, look like this, right there, and that'll put us right there. That's basically the center of the longer part of the tenon here, outside, not including the stub. So, set this to one and a quarter, and from the shoulder side, where it's gonna meet the shoulder, we're gonna mark that line, and that's where we're gonna do our drill, our through hole. There we go, good to go. For the dowels, I made mine on this project, and that's only because I forgot to buy them. I typically do buy mine, and I highly recommend that you do that. Making them is just not an enjoyable process to me. Don't make your dowels. Okay, cool. We made our dowel and it fits, so now we're gonna set the breadboard back on the tenons, and we're gonna mark for where our actual draw bore hole is gonna go. So now I'm gonna actually use the bit that I used to drill this hole out, this Forstner bit, and we're gonna knock our mark there. There. And there. And now that gives us the very center of this hole. So now we're gonna do is pull our breadboard off and we're gonna make a new mark 1 16th of an inch behind that one. So that 16th inch back set hole actually makes it so that when you knock the dowel in, it pulls the breadboard to the shoulder and makes this a really tight joint. So that's what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna use our mark here to find the hole, mar oh, to find the mark we just made. And we're just gonna go back. 16th of an inch, set our rule, mark that right there. Do the same thing on the other ones. 
On the center one, we're gonna just do a straight hole through. So on the outer tenons, we're gonna use a brad point bit so we can get our hole through here. And then once we get through the hole, we're gonna start reaming it out to make the hole bigger to account for seasonal move movement on the table. That will allow our dowel to move throughout the season. There we go. Next step is to get the breadboard back on. We're gonna glue just the middle tenon. The outer tenons will not be glued on. They will be left free to move throughout the seasons. And then we'll start setting our dowels in to the breadboard borehole, or draw boreholes. All right, so now that we've got our glue on, we're gonna set our pin, and this is gonna draw the, the breadboard to the shoulder. There we have it. These are all set. Now the next step is to just flush trim these and sand them up and make them look pretty. Okay, so the table is now finished. We actually got all the finish on, we put everything together, and I, I really am happy with how this came out. I'm gonna be very honest, I, the customer wanted a black base with a white top. I thought it was gonna look kinda silly, but I actually really love this table. I think it came out really nice. The breadboards are super tight, the pins look great. This ash really just came together, and it's a really nice table. These breadboard ends are really cool. Even if you're someone who doesn't do woodworking, you're noticing that there's some long grain here, and then there's some wide grain here going this direction, you know, it, you're, you're kind of asking some questions as soon as you see this table, like what's going on here? This isn't just, just a straight piece of wood. And I don't know, it's just a really cool feature on a really cool table, and I'm just really happy how this came out. If you have any questions about anything I didn't cover in the video, let me know down below in the comments and I'll answer your question as fast as I can and as best as I can.